Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. You are watching my knitting podcast videos and my name is Sari. Today I'm going to show you what I've been knitting during the past week or so. Uh, it's a lovely sunny Monday here in, in Helsinki. Um, we had a few weeks of really spring-like weather and almost all of the snow was already gone and I was already waiting for the first flowers to start blooming and then at the end of last week we got um, more snow in Finland we call it Takatalvi which means that our winter comes back so we had a horrible Takatalvi um, during the weekend yesterday there was a horrible snowstorm and and today we have something like minus five degrees, but it's a clear blue sky and and really really sunny. But uh, last week before before the winter came back, uh, I was already like really uh, in in the spring and summer mood and and thinking about all the summer knits I'm going to make. So I cast it on a new. Uh, summer top. I can show this to you in a bit. And now I feel a bit silly about making it um, and I'm thinking whether I should uh, pursue my more um, winter-like um, patterns um, at the moment because it's still uh, so much like winter out there. But anyway, um, in my previous episode I only had I think two um, things on my needle. So I had the Celeste Summer Top um, and the Billy uh, Cable Pullover and I have actually doubled <laughs> the amount of things I have on my needles during this uh, past week. Um, but actually I'm only actively working on, on three of the things that I have on my needles. Um, that is because the Celeste top, uh, I made a silly mistake with it. Um, I ran out of yarn. Um, I think uh, this happens to all the meters. Uh, I, th I think everybody has uh, run out of yarn at, at one point or another. But I think this is the first time I kind of like run out of yarn before I have <laughs> even started the project. So I'm I haven't even finished anything to yoke yet, so I still have uh, one more uh, kind of like pattern repeat. It's not really a pattern repeat, but if you look closely, this is the Celeste Summer Top, and it has these like wave-like uh, lace patterns and bubbles, so they go always like this, and then again and bigger and bigger and bigger. And I'm almost done with the second last uh, wave. Of, of uh, eyelets and bubbles, so I have one more, the biggest one left, and I kind of run out of yarn here. Um, not really because I have one uh, full of skein of yarn. This is the one that I've been showing you. I usually always, when I show you something, I have one um, extra skein here with me, so I can show you the, the yarn, how it looks like, and the label, and so on. So. And this is the extra ball that I have been showing you. I was so sure that I had bought five <laughs> balls um, of this yarn. And I've been knitting the yarn a double, so I, I've been using two. So this is everything I have left of the first two skins. And then I have this one. And I was sure I have two more. And I bought the yarn already before Christmas. I ordered um, quite a lot of kind of summer yarn at the same time. So I ordered um, knitting for olives pure silk in three different colors. I had uh, this off white and um, kind of like beige, like very light beige, and and then black, and then I had um, this khaki green. And then I ordered, at the same time, I ordered this Knitting for Olives um, Cotton Merino yarn. This is the colorway Mousy Rose. You can see, see the yarn name. And here. And I was sure I had ordered five because um, for the 
um, pure silk tops. I have also uh, used the yarn always held double, so I have needed the Roman holiday top, uh, the Venetian tank and the Florence tank uh, last summer uh, with Knitting for Olives pure silk. And I held the yarn double, so I know that I need four skeins of yarn for that. And for some reason, I was sure I had ordered five skeins of this because this was intended for um, also for for um, kind of like um, sleeveless top. That was my original idea because I have um, we are knitters. I think it's petite wool, uh, kind of like chunky wool in in the same kind of like mauve um, grayish pink. So I had this idea of like a little little bralette and then a chunky uh, cardigan in the same same colorway but different yarn but I didn't have time to make that happen and now when I wanted to cast on the Celeste summer top I saw this yarn in my stash and I thought this would be perfect perfect for for the Celeste summer top and I had made the made the yoke and then um, I needed more yarn and I was searching through my, my stash and I couldn't find any more than, than this, this uh, one ball. And I think I have mentioned to you in my previous episodes that um, my stash um, is a mess at the moment. Um, I should really go through it and I've been just like piling everything there. It used to be kind of organized. There was like this um, to be knitted next um, shelf where I had all the yarns that um, were for projects that had deadlines so I knew that okay those are, are the kind of yarns that can get buried under so those, those are there so that I remember that I have to have, have to use them and they have a set deadline and I need to need to knit them first and then I had um, another shelf for um, sock yarn so all my sock yarn were on one shelf and then they were like organized kind of like uh, by yarn weight so all my fingering weight yarn were, were, were on one shelf and then um, DK worsted Aran. but uh, something has happened uh, during the past year um, one of or some things more than one thing has happened one of the things was that um, because my last year was so super busy that I didn't have time to organize my stash so I was just putting everything there and also I didn't have as much time to knit as that I had anticipated so I bought more yarn that I used so kind of um, I had planned to use more yarn last year than I actually did uh, I thought that I would have more time to knit but but I didn't didn't expect uh, this uh, past year to go like it did, and and then um, usually the busier I am, the messier I am. And usually when I have a big project, for example, when I was still working at Novita, uh, every time the deadline of the new magazine came closer, my my table my desk at work started to get messier and after I finished the deadline and before starting uh, before I started the next magazine uh, I always cleaned my table at that point but last year has been such a mess of a deadlines that I haven't had that time <coughs> to go through my stash and organize everything and put away the things that I don't use anymore so it's just been piling and another thing that has happened I think I have at least in the Finnish speaking episode I talked about this I'm not sure if I talked about this in in the um, English speaking episode but another thing that has happened during the, this past year is that um, when I previously used to knit mostly with fingering weight yarn because that was like the trendy thing a few years ago so when you have a skein of fingering weight yarn it's quite i don't have any here with me i was just looking so if i had i could show they are quite slim so even if you have a sweater worth of fingering weight yarn it it's something like this so you have five to six skeins of um fingering weight yarn and it doesn't take that much room but the thing that has happened during this year 
since we moved to this apartment um, a year ago in October, uh, early November, and I organized all my stash at that point. One of the things that's, that has happened is that I have started to use more um, uh, thicker weight yarn. So instead of having those like really slim um, fingering weight yarn skeins, suddenly my stash consists of um, around worsted weight, DK weight, like these really plump skeins of yarn. So um, if you have a sweater worth of yarn like this, it doesn't fit like this in your hands because it's almost like one or two skins. Suddenly uh, one sweater worth of yarn is uh, this much. And if I previously, let's say I had six uh, uh, sweater worths of yarn, then it was something like this. And now it's like this uh, the amount of yarn that I have. Another thing is that I have started to use quite a lot of yarns that aren't on skins, but um, kind of like balls of yarn, for example, all the yarns from Knitting for Olive, they are on balls, so they don't fit on my yarn shelves um, as nicely as um, those like slim skins of yarn. They are all the time falling, rolling and falling down and I'm just like pushing them back and I have been trying to buy these like containers for them, but of course every time you have a container then it takes more more room so this is another reason that my my stash is um, uh, overflowing and if you have containers and you have these small balls of yarn in there and there's something else there get easily buried, buried under um, other things so I thought I had five skins of this and turns out I had only three so I was first trying to search my stash, I couldn't find more of the yarn and then I went uh, to my email and searched for the, the order, or the receipt uh, I had uh, when I ordered this yarn and uh, looked at it uh, to see how many skeins I had ordered and I realized that I had actually ordered just three skeins of, of this yarn so I don't have any more than this. Um, which means that I had to place another order and I ordered some more yarn to be able to continue with the Celeste Summer Top. Uh, first I thought that I would start using this so I would pick the one, one end from inside and one end from the outside and start continu continuing to knit uh, the Celeste Pullover but then um, it's been such a while um, I think it was last October or something like that when I ordered the yarn so it's already like five five months ago so it probably isn't from the same dye lot so I decided that okay I will wait for the yarn to arrive and then I will um, use this together uh, with one one skin from that dye lot so that um, there won't be like this visible line where the yarn changes but it's kind of like fades fades together so that's why I haven't started this extra skin, but this is uh, how the Celeste Summer Top is looking like. And if you are new to my channel, this is a summer version of my popular Celeste Pullover pattern. The Celeste Pullover was knitted with a, a thicker yarn, like worsted weight yarn, and um, also it was a, a yuck wool yarn, so it's uh, quite warm and also bigger needles, so I'm using smaller needles for this one and this is a cotton merino blend like I told you and it's going to be uh, like slimmer, slimmer fit than the original Celeste and instead of uh, long sleeves it's going to have like kind of like slimmer uh, shorter sleeves so it's going to be a t-shirt so that's on, on slight hold at the moment and because I only had two things on my needle, so I had this one and the Billy pullover, which is also here next to me. Um, the Billy is already so big that it does, it's not really good for um, like bus ride knitting. And because of all the cables and so on, there's so many things happening. 
it doesn't really make uh, like a good um, mindless knitting project. So I needed something that is smaller and, and also I needed something that I don't have to concentrate that much on. So um, that's why I have casted on two new things on my, my needles. But yeah, I can show you this because I already have it in my hands. So this is a Billy Pullover. Um, I haven't really had that much time to knit this um, last week because um, I was helping my uh, grandmother. She's moving moving to like this uh, service housing and she's been living in her apartment for 39 years. She isn't really actually my grandmother, she's uh, more like my, my father's aunt, so my grandfather's sister. But she doesn't have her own children and this means she doesn't have her own grandchildren. And she's always been more like a third grandmother to me, so I'm always referring to her as my, my grandmother when I'm talking to uh, people I don't know about her, so it's easier to tell that she's my grandmother than, than start explaining all this, that she's my father's aunt and so on. But anyway, I've been helping her to pack things and, and move, so that's why I haven't had that, sm that much time to, to knit. Um, and I also also needed uh, something smaller and and um, easier uh, for the train ride when I went there. So that's why this has been slightly dormant for the past week. But I have made it past um, um, separating the sleeves from from the body, and really enjoy how this is looking like. Um, so I started this top down, as you can see, and then uh, I picked up the neckband and worked it in the round. So this is started at the, at the neckline and first worked flat back and forth and then joined at the front front neck. So, so I can have this like really nice shaping that the back is longer than the front and this improves the fit of the sweater. And so until until here it is knitted flat and then joined at the front and continued in the round. But I wanted to make the neck band here so it looks nicer and and I also see that it fits nicely and it looks good. So it has like this double folded neck band. So I picked up stitches along along the neckline and then worked it in the in the round and folded it double and seamed it on the inside. And as you can see, this has this honeycomb, really classic uh, patterning honeycomb uh, cables, and and then here some other cables. And I made this cable pattern going along the raglan, but it finishes here at the, the arm holes, and then it's just going to be a uh, stitch on the side. So. Very um, classic, nothing, nothing fancy, but I wanted to make a really, really classic um, cabled pullover. And the yarn that I have been using for this one is the yarn that I had in my hand when I was talking about my stash. So this is uh, Cascade Yarns, and um, this is the 220 to 220 yarn. Uh, it's 100% Peruvian, Peruvian wool, Highland wool, and this is the colorway 8010. And I think the colorway was called Natural. So this is like this really beautiful off white uh, yarn. And I've been using this quite a lot lately. I um, really enjoy using it. Uh, we went ice skating um, a week ago, and um, I'm usually I, I'm always really cold, especially when it's cold outside. But this, I think, it was the first time ever I went ice skating, and I only had a sweater on me, so I was wearing the the Urban Adventure pullover that I made, and I only had this like I had the same a little um, top under the Urban Adventure pullover. So first of all, it didn't scratch at all, so it wasn't itchy at all. It was really nice to have on my bare skin. 
And second of all, I, I had to take off my uh, winter coat because the Urban Adventure pullover that was needed in this yard, it was so warm that um, I was sweating underneath the, the winter coat. So I was only wearing like this little top and, and the Urban Adventure pullover and it was just enough for like, I think it was something like minus, minus one or plus one. Uh, Celsius and, and sunny, so so it was just perfect. So I really enjoy using the yarns. Um, I think it's really good quality and not that expensive. And like I said, it doesn't itch at all, so it's super nice. And, and the other things that I have been knitting, one of them is this that I have on my needles here that I already showed you a bit. So this is, actually this is like, I have even uh, surprised myself how quickly this is knitting up despite it's not even that thick a yarn. So I think it's something like maybe sport weight or or a like very light DK weight and the ball of yarn here. So this is a Katia Concept. Uh, Tencel Merino. This is the colorway 100 and it's a 70% lyocell and 30% um, merino wool. A really nice yarn. You can see it's beautiful, beautiful color. Uh, as you can see, it's my, actually my favorite color. I'm wearing the same color at the moment. I don't think this uh, color looks really, really good on me. So it's one of my favorite colors and this is how much I have already knitted in just one week. I think I started this exactly one week ago. And in my previous episode, you might remember, uh, I showed you, I was um, knitting this back panel of lace and made something five centimeters or something like that. And it was going to be the top, top of the, the back. And then I realized that didn't really really like it and uh, wasn't really feeling it and I wasn't enjoying making it and I like the um, stitch pattern that I chose and I still like the idea that I had but for some reason this yarn and that stitch pattern uh, they didn't really I I don't think uh, they looked good together so it wasn't like what I had in my mind. Um, and I think I had it on my table for like one week and I was just looking at it and I didn't feel like picking it up and continuing it with, with it. Um, I, I think that's a pretty good sign that uh, it's not something that um, I truly like. So I have learned to listen to that intuition sometimes. Um, at the middle of, of something that I need, I get this um, feeling that, okay, this is this isn't working and I don't like this and so on. But um, it's like usually the, the point where I either I go back and I rip it and I start over or then I push through that feeling. Um, usually if I decide to rip it back, um, or not usually, always, uh, I have actually I have never regretted uh, ripping something back. Um, I might feel first like, okay, I've spent so much time on this already and it's wasted time. But then I start to think that, okay, if I don't rip it back and, and I will continue it, how much more time I'm going to use on it, has some time that I'm not enjoying or, or um, I'm not going to wear this uh, summer top or, or whatever. So I, I have learned to listen to my gut feeling about about the design and like I said it's not always that the design is not good but maybe the, the yarn isn't the best one for the design or or something like that so I rip it back and either I use the yarn for something else or I pick another yarn for for the design and I still like the, the um, stitch pattern but not with this yarn, so maybe I will use the stitch pattern to, to do something else. I haven't decided yet, but let's see. It might, might look better with something something else. And, um, 
this is uh, what became of that lace top. So it looks totally different now, as you can see, no lace. And, and here it is started um, the same way as my Odette pullover. So I started it uh, at the back and work it downwards and made some increases here and then put it on hold before before the armhole and then picked up stitches from the neckband for the neckband from from the shoulder and continued downwards until until this point and the same thing for the other side so I worked downwards then joined together at the front and and made the increases here and then joined joined together at, at the armholes and um, then I've been just working in the round and as you can see there's some patterning there's like this kind of like imitation of a bra shape here at the front so these are made with um, increases and decreases so it's actually pretty easy uh, a lot easier than it looks like so super happy about this I know that I'm going to use this uh, a lot next um, summer <laughs> whenever the summer decides to arrive like I said it's uh, again like a really really winter like over there and the stitch pattern that I've been using for this and just every other row is just knit everything and every other row is like knit one pearl one so it makes this uh, kind of like looks almost like a rib stitch so this um there's like always a column of of knit stitches and then like a column of a uh, got, got a stitch i think this is a really nice super easy stitch pattern and um it doesn't take as long to knit as for example brioche it looks a bit like brioche or fisherman's rib but but it's not as thick and because you're not making the yarn overs and also um, if you worked in a uh, regular ribbing like knit one pearl one on each round then ribbing usually uh, pulls together so I didn't want that I want this to be kind of like loose and and easy going so th that's why I think this uh, stitch pattern is better than, than a regular rib so I think I will just continue a few more centimeters here and then I'm going to do uh, some ribbing for the for the bottom hem and I will do some kind of edging I haven't decided yet if I want to have a couple of ropes of ribbing for the neckband and also the uh, sleeve um, sleeve openings uh, I want to do something to finish finish this off nicely uh, maybe the sleeves are okay but something for the neckline I want to, to finish it off or then I will do the same thing as I did for the Adelita vest that um, I will pick up stitches and knit one round and then um, bind off everything uh, as if the pearl I think that looked really nice with the Adelita top it makes, makes the edge like um, finished but um, still it's like really minimal minimal edging so I want to keep this like really um, simple and, and kind of like classy and the last thing that I have on my needles Luna is here next to me and she decided to go and sleep on it so let's see if I can get it from under her this is also knitting up really quickly I casted this on um, not last weekend, but the week before that, so right after I, I filmed my previous episode for you. And this was also because I wanted to have something super simple on my needles. Like I said, the, I, the only thing I had on my needles was the, the Billy pullover and I needed some uh, really nice uh, TV knitting for, for the weekend. And I was also thinking that I would have this uh, with me for the commutes, but this is actually knitting up so quickly, maybe because I'm using quite chunky yarn and, and big needles. And so this has been knitting uh, up so much quicker than uh, I expected. 
Uh, so that's why I had to cast on the summer top as well. That I had something smaller and now I'm actually again at the situation that, that I don't uh, have anything uh, small. Like I have some yarn here next to me that I want to show you that I'm going to cast on something small because I need something small and portable for the bus rides. But anyway, um, this is the Frankie pullover and this is um, a super simple pullover. It's a raglan topline raglan pattern. I'm going to fold the neckband double. I just haven't done that yet so it needs to be sewn on the inside. I haven't had time to do that yet. But this is like um, I think this is probably going to be a free pattern. That's my plan at least and um, kind of Everybody's always saying to me that all my patterns are super hard. For example, Celeste is so, it looks so hard and Poet is so hard and so on. And I kind of, I disagree. Okay, of course there is, if you're like a total beginner, um, none of them, you know, like for example, the Celeste or the, the Poet, neither of them are the kind of blowers that you would start if you have never knitted anything before. So they are uh, like, intermediate or I would almost say that they are like I think Celeste might even be like advanced beginner it depends on so much on the person but definitely they are not definitely hard um, I think my, a lot of my designs they look harder than they actually are um, and I think so many people are afraid to, to, to pick my patterns and start knitting them because they think that my patterns are so hard. Uh, but I try to take really good care of uh, pattern writing, so I try to write everything um, out really, really well and, and provide tutorial links and so on. So I don't think my patterns are actually that hard. And um, so I wanted to to make a few patterns, like more basic patterns, um, that like showcase my my uh, writing pattern writing style, um, so that uh, people who are interested in knitting my patterns can first try those out and see the style of pattern writing that I have and realized that okay it's not that intimidating after all so uh, for example the ED hat pattern it's the purple hat that I showed you in my previous video it was the one that has like two sides so that's going to be a free pattern and at least for the time being so I'm going to upload it uh, it on on Ravelry as a free download and I was thinking about the same thing for this one, so at least for the time being this is going to be a free pattern. And just to showcase the way that I, I write patterns and kind of provide an easy gate to, to my harder harder patterns, hopefully, hopefully. And um, this is knitted with um, Sunhens Garn, uh, Borstet Alpaca. And this is the colorway 2650 and as usually I will write all the um, yarn names and colored braid names uh, beneath this pattern so if you want to check them out you just uh, go below the video and, and you can see the, um, the, 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 all the text that I have written below the video. There's going to be all the yarn names and, and pattern names and everything I have mentioned. So I bought this from Snurre here in Helsinki and it's a really nice yarn. It's 96% um, um, alpaca and 4% nylon and it's, um, I think it's chunky, chunky weight or something like that. I'm using 5mm needles for this one and it's really nice yarn for beginners because it doesn't have a very good stitch definition. As you can see it's like this fluffy, fluffy yarn so you don't see a single stitch so well so if there's like a small mistake or something like um, a small gauge issue I don't think 
you can really see it in the final uh, thing. Uh, for example, if you miss one increase and make it on the row below instead, or if it's slightly off, then it doesn't really show in the final uh, final pullover. So I think it's a really good yarn for for beginners. And also, I think um, five millimeter needles are I think they're the perfect size for for a beginner. Um, for example. Um, like 10 millimeter needles that usually are for beginners like if you want to make this like a super chunky yarn and chunky weight hat and you use something like um, 10 millimeter needles at least it start to hurt to hurt my hands so I can't really knit with really big needles for more than an hour um, and then my hand, hands start to cramp and, and I, I don't really enjoy working that big needles but I think smaller, smaller needles are better for, um, for that. So, of course, you don't want to go down too much in needle sizes. If you like starting out and you're using two point five millimeter needles, it's going to take forever you to finish anything. So I think five millimeter is still kind of like big, that you can see the project growing quite quickly. It doesn't take ages to knit and but it's still kind of like ergonomical to to hold so you don't start to your hands don't start to hurt immediately so that's what um why i picked this yarn and these needles if you compare it to this to irene irene top as you can see the stitch definition is really good so if i had made a mistake somewhere here along this um decrease and increase lines uh, it would definitely show or if um, here for some reason uh, it should be a knit stitch then I made a, a, a purl stitch it would show but with this yarn this is like quite um, forgiving in that sense so I think this is really good for for a beginner so that's why, why I wanted to make this like super simple pullover and also because I wanted to have something super simple on my needles as well. Mm, but that's actually everything I had for today. Oh yeah, I was going to show you I have some new yarn next to me. Like I said, I don't have anything small on my needles at the moment. I'm still uh, bringing the Irene top to, to the bus, but it's going to be ready soon and still it's uh, slightly too big actually to, to comfortably uh, take out of your bag for a 20 minute bus ride and then put back so I uh, need something smaller but I haven't yet decided what I want to make um, I got this yarn from um, Menipa here in Helsinki um, not got, I bought it and um, to avoid any any confusion so I bought bought this yarn and not, I didn't get it I, I bought it um, but anyway actually everything everything I have here next to me all, all the projects that I showed you um, are yarns that I have bought myself so I wanted to make that that clear I usually buy all my own yarn even though I would get them for free but but um, uh, I usually I first of all I want to support the local yarn stores especially now during the pandemic um, but also um, kind of want to work with my own schedule and, and do whatever I want to do so that is one reason why I usually buy my own yarn so that I'm not accountable to anybody and I don't have any set deadlines and so on so even if I want to push back a deadline or, or uh, the publication of something for like half a year or decide not to use the yarn after all for, for a project then uh, I don't, I'm not accountable for anybody um, regarding the yarn so I can do whatever I want if I want to give it away then I can give it away I don't have to use it if, if, if it's not something that I want to use after all but, but anyway um, just wanted to clear that up um, Anyway, now uh, I was going to use these for for a hat, so I kind of need something um, 
smaller. Um, I wanted to make this like cabled hat with um, a brim that I can roll like really high. And that's something that I want, wanted to make and I picked up this yarn. I absolutely love the colorway. It's, um, I don't know, maybe tobacco would be the, the right name for this color. It's like um, a maple. It's really um, like this orange brown. Uh, caramel, dark, really dark kind of caramel kind of color, super pretty, um, and it's a 100% um, merino wool yarn, I think. Yeah, and uh, this is the colorway 2755. So these are going to be a hat, and then I went to Snorri last week and I got bought. And got, I bought these yarns. Um, these are Filgolana Arvetta and this is the colorway 363. So these are going to become a pair of socks but I haven't yet decided what kind of socks I want to make. And uh, I know a lot of you have already used Arvetta for, I, I've, I've seen it on um, Instagram many times. People are using it a lot and I have never uh, used it before. I was surprised to see how um, vast the, the uh, color range they had. They looked in so many different colorways, really nice colorways. But um, I think I have already told you uh, here on my YouTube channel that when I was still working for Novita, um, I wasn't allowed to use uh, yarns that were considered to be in, kind of like in competition you know, with, with Novita. Uh, Novita is uh, providing yarns that are like more budget friendly. So I wasn't allowed to use uh, similar um, price range, yarns that are uh, from similar price range. For example, uh, Sunness Garn was off limits and and, um, and drops, drops design, garden studio drops design, and and Schachemeyer, and I think Regia also. But anyway, like all these, um, and Katia is one of the yarns that I wasn't allowed to use. But um, this is also kind of like more uh, a more affordable sock yarn. So I think. Uh, nobody ever told me that I wasn't allowed to use it, but I think for myself, I thought that it would be uh, like a comp competition to Novita, so I never, I have never used it before. But it's really nice now to try out all these new yarn, <laughs> new yarns, not new yarns, but yarns that I haven't been able to use for for such a long time. And I think it's really nice also to use more budget-friendly yarns instead of using yarns that cost like 30 euros per skein and some of the yarns that I have used are even more expensive and if you want to knit a sweater then it's uh, easily almost 200 euros worth of yarn and it's, it's, it's a lot of, lot of money for a lot of people. Of course I understand that if you want to have a really good quality um, fiber base, especially if you're using silk and mohair and like I prefer using, if it's possible, I want to use yarns that are uh, sustainable and ethical and, and so on, then of course the, the price tag is going to be higher and people who are hand dyeing the yarn have to be compensated for the work as well. So uh, I'm not saying that um, you shouldn't use uh, expensive yarns, but Somehow, sometimes it has felt a bit bad to me that people have been complaining to me that uh, I use too, too expensive yarns and um, they are not affordable for people and um, I, in that sense I'm not being inclusive because um, my the yarns that I use are so behind of like normal people's reach. When the reality has been that I haven't been allowed to use anything else, uh, either either I knit with those and design with those yarns, or then I don't do my own design work. So um, I'm super happy now that uh, I don't have any strings attached anymore, and I can use whatever yarn I want. 
And so it's been really nice to, to get to try out all these uh, different, different yarns that I haven't been able to use for these past few years. But that's everything I had for today. Uh, thank you for watching my videos. And if you like, like my videos, um, remember to subscribe to my channel. So you will always get notified when a new video comes out. Um, and let's see if I have time to film another video for you at the end of this week. Or if I don't, then I will film something for you at the beginning of next week. Uh, I didn't have time to film anything really last week. I tried, but but um, and then the guys came home and I didn't really have uh, the peace and quiet to film anything. So there was no no video last week. But but here's for you uh, a new video. That's everything. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.